Hello and welcome to Bioinformatics and Computational Biology Lectures. On this channel we will regularly upload video lectures related to Bioinformatics and Computational Biology. Our first series of lectures will be on the topic Reverse Vaccinology. Before we start uh, our series we will have an introductory video about what is a vaccine, the different types of vaccines and how these vaccines are developed. And then we will uh, talk about reverse vaccinology and the different uh, advantages of reverse vaccinology or conventional approaches of vaccine development. And then we will discuss in detail the different steps involved in vaccine designing. So what is a vaccine? A vaccine is a biological preparation that improves immunity to a particular disease. The first vaccine was developed by a British physician Edward Jenner in 1796 uh, edward jenner used a uh, cow fox virus uh, to protect against smallpox virus a related virus that caused disease in humans and then in 1981 a french microbiologist louis pasteur demonstrated immunization against anthrax uh, louis pasteur used um, bacillus uh, bacillus uh, attenuated forms of bacillus um, to uh, provide immunity against the bacillus anthracis and then four years later he developed a protective suspension against rabies virus so we have different types of uh, vaccine that uh, includes the traditional vaccines and the synthetic vaccines these are further divided into uh, subgroups the traditional vaccines include the inactivated vaccines and the live uh, attenuated vaccines the inactivated vaccine use microorganisms that are killed and then used as a vaccine. In, in live attenuated vaccines, the microorganisms are weakened. Their pathogenicity is removed. They, are, they cannot cause the disease and then these uh, microorganisms are used as a vaccine. And then we have synthetic vaccines that include recombinant vaccines, which is further divided into four different groups that is subunit vaccine, DNA vaccine, edible vaccine and conjugate vaccine. So the different classes of vaccines available uh, includes the live attenuated viruses that includes via, uh, licensed vaccines against smallpox, polio, measles, mumps, influenza and chickenpox. In the inactivated purified category we have uh, vaccines against uh, polio, influenza, hepatitis and, and rabies and so on with the rest of the table so uh, how do we develop a vaccine and the first step in a vaccine development is to select a suitable strain for vaccine production and then growing those microorganisms in a lab or in, at a high level in pharmaceutical industries and then these microorganisms are purified then uh, these microorganisms are uh, either inactivated, they are killed, uh, they are attenuated using different chemicals and different um, types of uh, different methods. And then these vaccines are uh, packaged and used as a vaccine to protect against those uh, microorganisms. In uh, Pakistan, we have uh, different companies that produce vaccines that include the Amson vaccines in Parma and Islamabad. Uh, they, do, they develop vaccines against tetanus, hepatitis B and typhoid. The BF vaccines limited Lahore produce hepatitis B and C. The Gets Parma in Karachi produce hepatitis B and C vaccines. The NIH paramedic laboratories and Varic pharmaceutical industries also develop vaccines against hepatitis B and C, tetanus, measles, babies, typhoids and anti-allergens. So our main uh, focus will be on the reverse vaccinology. It uses different bioinformatics tools to identify structures from bacteria, virus, parasite, cancer cells or allergens that could induce an immune response to protect against a specific disease. What we do in reverse vaccinology is that we identify uh, a sequence, a protein sequence uh, from a pathogen and then that protein uh, pathogen is evaluated using different parameters uh, to select the uh, portion which is antigenic that portion which can produce uh, induce immune response and then that portion is used to uh, design a vaccine the first vaccine that was developed using this approach was against the Neisseria meningitis 
so what are the advantages of reverse vaccine allergy over the conventional approaches of vaccine development there are multiple advantages of reverse vaccine allergy that includes uh, such as the cost and time uh, of uh, the cost and time of vaccine development in conventional approaches you have to first isolate and then grow and then purify and then inactivate and so on that is a very complex process whereas in uh, comparison to that in reverse vaccine allergy you just need a, a genome a genome sequence and that can be used to design the vaccine and uh, we do in uh, conventional approaches we have to cultivate those microorganisms sometimes a microorganism is uh, risky to be cultured in uh, lab and so in reverse vaccine allergy that disadvantage is um, uh, addressed and so we do not need to grow those microorganisms in lab uh, or uh, uh, simply we can just uh, get the genome sequence of those uh, microorganisms and uh, use it to develop a vaccine so how do we develop a vaccine using the bioinformatics and the reverse vaccinology uh, tools so first we uh, do the genome sequencing of uh, the pathogen and then those genome sequence uh, is uh, analyzed by different bioinformatics tools for identification of uh, the sequence that are best to de induce immune response in the uh, host then the vaccine and uh, that we have designed using this approach is synthesized in lab and then and that nucleotide sequence is then cloned into a, an appropriate plasmid and the plasmid is then transferred into a microorganism where that uh, vaccine will be uh, prepared and this vaccine is then purified and then used as a vaccine so here are the different steps involved in, in designing a vaccine the first step is selection of proteins within the um, proteome of that microorganism you have to select the proteins that are most suitable for designing a vaccine we have different parameters and this uh, for this um, for selection of proteins that we will discuss in coming lectures then we predict and select the HTL and CTL epitopes we have different parameters how to select uh, the best CTL epitope and how to select the best HTL epitopes for designing this vaccine then we have to once we have uh, designed a vaccine then we have to evaluate at different parameters that includes at allergenicity and antigenicity for a vaccine uh, to work better that must be uh, in that must be antigenic and non-allergenic then we move on to uh, different physiochemical parameters such as that uh, molecular weight that theoretical pi the instability index and uh, so on and then we uh, generate the secondary and tertiary structures for that vaccine the tertiary and uh, secondary structures are then validated and refined so that the structure that we generate here in uh, bi using bioinformatics tools mm, is similar to that uh, produced uh, in the microorganism in the real world and then we produce uh, predicts the B cell epitopes in that vaccine and then we move on to molecular docking of the vaccine structure that we have generated in the tall like receptor and then we uh, perform molecular dynamic simulations that evaluate the stability uh, of the complex the molecular uh, the molecular docking complex of tall like receptor and vaccine and then this vaccine is after all these measurements and parameters the vaccine is then reverse translated and uh, restriction sites are added uh, to both ends of this uh, reverse translated sequence and then this is cloned using uh, uh, software that we will uh, discuss in our coming lectures what are the parameters for selection of a protein the characteristics are given in uh, the one side and then the middle you have seen the graphical descri uh, description and the softwares on the other side that are used for these uh, purposes and the first is subcellular localization subcellular localization means the protein that you are selecting where it is located for that purpose, we use different uh, types of software such as Sort B, Cello, Target B, Cell Lock, Lock DB, etc. The vaccine that are extracellular or that are present on the membrane are prepared to for vaccine design. The reason for that is uh, that um, the uh, proteins from the pathogen that, that comes in contact 
with the human receptors are suitable for designing the vaccine then we have to uh, comes to the adhesion characteristic of the protein the protein must be adhesive it must uh, bind to the uh, receptor for that purpose we have we also have some servers to evaluate this and then uh, we comes to the antigenicity the antigenicity of these uh, proteins the proteins that we are selected must be uh, antigenic for that purpose we use different uh, softwares and servers such as the vexigen etc and then uh, the most important of these is the similarity with the human to avoid uh, autoimmune response we must only select those proteins who are uh, whom share no similarity with the human uh, proteins and then we comes to the transmembrane helix for transmembrane helix we use tm hmm and tm pred etc different types of uh, servers are available the protein that have uh, lower number of uh, transmembrane helix are easy to isolate while those that have high number are embedded deep into the uh, membrane and cannot be isolated easily mm, so these are the uh, five parameters for selection of a candidate proteins we will soon in the, our following lectures we will uh, uh, practically do uh, how uh, practically do all these subcellular localization the adhesion antigenicity similarity transmembrane helix and move on to all uh, further lectures